Okay, I'm going to read part of Genesis 3. Right after the fall, he said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And to the woman, woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. In your painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband. He will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you have listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree, which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it. All the days of your life, it will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow. And you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since you were taken from dust you are. And to dust you will return. And if you look over in the book of Romans, it says that Jesus is the last Adam. And effectually what he did <laughs> is he redeemed us from the curse of the fall. Now, if you still look at the world around you, you still see lots of toil. You still see women talking about childbirth as an awful thing and um, you still see women wanting to control their husbands and um, you still see like a lot of results that just you know are not pretty but if you head over to scripture it says that you enter into those things that he has done by faith and so there's this place of, of being in the spirit where you're no longer relying on your own efforts, you're no longer relying on what you've grown up with, the patterns that you've seen modeled, and you're entering into Jesus, and it's the fruit of His Spirit that starts to flow out of you because you are eating of life. Because Jesus is life. And He says that whoever comes to Him will neither hunger or thirst, but you'll be completely satisfied, completely fulfilled, so I'm just going to, and there's something that you know, really stood out to me from, from that passage of scripture. It just it came to me in an instance that that word, the, the fruit of the ground and the fruit of her body were no longer in ease. And I was like, that's got to be the same word. And I looked it up and sure enough, that word translated pain and that word translated toil were the exact same Hebrew word. It means it's you're gonna make it's making it harder on you than it initially was. It's making it more work. But here's here's a tidbit of redemption. Is Jesus redeemed you from that fall? And if you enter into the spirit, you could actually walk in what Jesus laid out. Jesus already took care of. Now, where do I get that idea from? I get that from from Romans 8, where it says that Jesus condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous standard of the law might be fulfilled in us. So he already did it for us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, telling you how you enter into it. He did it, yet here's how you enter into it. It says, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are controlled by the spirit cannot please God. So there's a place of setting your mind on the things of God that enables you to walk in the things that Jesus already paid for. Because it's not just meant to sit over here in La La Land. Yes, Jesus redeemed us. Yes and amen. And yes, I was healed. But it's like, okay, well, do something. Well, I can't. Because <laughs> the symptoms are still there. You just haven't clicked yet. And, and guys, as you start to focus on things of God, you let your heart be drawn in. That hearing of faith, and then you start moving on. You start taking action. You're going to see miraculous things happen in your life where you're not going to have to toil for bread. You're not going to have to toil for... For your provision and even women are not going to have to 
um, labor, giving birth to children is not going to be a big laborious thing. It's not going to be a big painful thing. And I know there's um, more than one woman that has demonstrated this part of the gospel. My mother was one of them. She did it four times. And uh, people would tell her, well, after this kid, then you're actually going to experience, you know, what it's really like. And she, she just kept on believing the word of God. Because, guys, it's not based on what you, you've done right or you've done wrong in your life. It's based on Jesus. And, and then you enter into that by trusting in him. And that's what it said about Abraham is that, you know, it wasn't by works he was justified. It was by faith. Now, the works they're talking about in here is your own efforts your efforts out of the works of the flesh it's not talking about in the book of james which is faith which is actions of faith to show that your faith is alive it's real it's moving it's breathing and that's the two sides of the coin there as you know romans it really emphasizes this is by faith it's by faith it's by faith that you're justified and then and then james is the other side of that coin says it's by works because um and it's that it's the working out of the spirit, not working towards the spirit. That's the difference. They're talking about the same thing. It's by faith, but you express your faith in what you do. But it's not a working of the flesh. It's not something of your own efforts. Because that's what it means to do it in the flesh, is you're trying to do it in your own efforts, just like with Abraham and Hagar. They produce Ishmael. They could have done that by their own efforts. <laughs> they did. <laughs> and that's, you know, what Paul talks about in Galatians. He said, you know, so you want to live under law? Well, here's an example. <laughs> here's an example of what it means to, you know, that this one was out of the flesh and this one was out of the spirit. Um, because the spirit of God can do the impossible through you, but you have to step out in obedience. You got to realize that, you know, it's, it's not you anymore that lives, but it's Jesus that lives through you. And that as you begin to move into these things, you're going to see more of the miraculous in your life. And I believe like, you know, in Psalm 91, it talks about supernatural protection. That's another side of the provision that Jesus gave, part of the redemption. But that was even foreshadowing it, is that foreshadowing abiding under the shadow of the Almighty is the same as walking in the Spirit. And, you know, people often say, well, it's by repeating the psalm. Well, not exactly. Because you could repeat something but not believe it. It's entering into the spirit of faith. And that's what has power to break things loose. So go, go discover um, your redemption. Dive into the word. Take some action steps on your faith today and, and, and watch your life transform. Share it with others. God bless.